is Teacher Tin. Today, we are going to learn how to set up our Zoom meeting. So, the first thing we need to do is one, connect to the internet and then just click our Zoom app. Okay, so it will redirect us into this tab wherein you can see under meetings, you have your personal meeting ID and here under edit, you can find your password. Notice the personal meeting ID we cannot change because we need to upgrade to Pro to do that. So here's the password. When you want your students to automatically enter your class, just give them your personal meeting ID and the password. It's up to you if you want to create a waiting room where you can admit your students. For now, what we're going to do is to click start. So this is how it will look like. The first thing it will ask is what kind of audio you want to use. So I'm going to join with my computer audio. And then launch my video which is here under start video beside mute. You also have to check here some mute if your audio is on. So if it has this green thing that goes up and down, it means that it's on. Same as your uh, video. If it doesn't have the red slash, it means that your video is working. So right now, I'm using a virtual background. So how did I do that? Um, I do this so that I can further engage my students. So I can change this from time to time so that they have something to look forward to when we meet. So here, under video, all you need to do is to click this little arrow beside the video icon. Choose virtual background. So, another tab will open or window. Here, I have stored images already. So, I can choose Spongebob. Pwede rin na pictures ng offices or bahay. I also have Star Wars. So, it really depends on you kung anong gusto mong gamitin. Just make sure that you have a green screen or at least a plain white background. And then, don't wear the same color as your background kasi magiging floating yung ulo natin. So, let's go use this one because it, it's cute. Okay, and I just close that. Now, how do I invite my student? So, for example, walang uh, information yung student ko regarding my personal meeting ID and password. What I can do is to invite him or her using his or her Gmail. So, I'm going to click Participants. This is my waiting room, this rectangular box on the side, which uh, it shows that I'm the host. I, I will click Invite, then go to Email. I usually use Gmail. And then type the information of the person. I invite. So, here... Under 2, we have to write the email address of the person we're going to invite in our meeting. So, there. And then, we'll just click send. The URL here, they can just click that directly and they will be directed to your meeting. Or, you can just ask them to input the ID or the password. So, let's click send. I advise you give your personal meeting ID and password beforehand para hindi na kayo pa ulit ulit na nagsisend ng invitation. Okay? And try not to send your information to other people para ma-avoid natin yung Zoom bombing or Zoom hacking. So, we'll just wait for the student to receive the notification and to enter the class. O oh, yan, nakita na natin yung name niya. Nakalagay dito, one person is waiting. So, what I did was I enabled the waiting room para makikita ko kung sinong papasok. So, I'll click admit. So, let's just wait. Because sometimes it takes time to connect. So, here, he's not going to use his camera because it's just for the purpose of demonstration. Kaya, kita natin dito sa... Side, so right side, there's a slash and the video icon is red, which means that his camera is off. We also have to wait for the student to connect to audio para maririnig natin sila, okay? Because it doesn't automatically connect. Alright, so what do I do next? What I need to do next is to click security. I have to, uh, dito natin makikita si enable waiting room, wherein you're the host and you admit your students. 
Um, I am, I'm also not allowing share screen unless I enable it for some some situation so that I can control the screen most of most of the time. But I enable chat para if ever man na may breakdown sa audio, we can chat each other or send files. So what do I do next? For security purposes, we have to lock the meeting, which means that nobody else can enter the meeting room unless you admit that person. Okay, so that's a safeguard. All right. So here's chat para lang makita niyo how it works. Okay. You can type here a message, then you can type there if there's no audio, no audio. Turn turn on your mic. Microphone. So it's one way to communicate if there's a breakdown with your audio. Okay. So, ang isang importante sa Zoom na magandang gamitin ng educators ay yung share screen. Kasi ito talaga yung ginagamit natin sa pagtuturo. So, it's this one. The one with the green arrow. By the way, you can also record your sessions. Of course, don't do that without the permission of the parents. And then, you can also use reactions. Yun nga lang, limited to. Clap lang at saka like. So, lumalabas siya sa inyong screen. Like. Yan. So, medyo maliit siya. Okay, let's... Try to share some documents. So, click share screen. Okay, the one that we use most of the time is the whiteboard. So, it acts like an actual whiteboard. Ito yung gusto ko sa Zoom kasi yung whiteboard niya built in. So, hindi natin kailangan ng extensions. Okay, so for example, I want to draw or make figures. I just have to click. This is the annotation toolbar, by the way. I just have to click draw and then use a curve line. Ayan. My laptop is touch screen, so medyo mas madali siya kasi touch screen siya. Pero you can also do this using a mouse. So if you want to erase that, just click erase or click undo. So erase one by one. If you just clear all drawings, ubod na yan lahat. Alright, so ito yung meron si teacher na wala si student. Meron tayong spotlight. Let me just uh, write something using text, okay? Bawa, I'll put there. I'll put here. Hi, I am teacher Tin. Okay. Click outside the box before it appears to the screen of your student. Okay. Oh, ayan. So halimbawa gusto kong ipoint yung words. I can use the spotlight. So hi, I am teacher Tin. So nagaguide mo sila while you read. Another way to do that is to use stamps. So, pwedeng star. Hi, I am teacher Tin. So, yun yung mga ginagamit ko during decoding. So, you can change color. It's found here under format. You can use spotlight. You can put stamps. You can draw figures, lines, arrows, and so on. Now, if I want my student to answer, what I need to do is to click remote control. I will enable Rigor Pineda here. Click the name of your student. And then your student can control the screen already. So to, to find out how your student can control the screen, I have a different video for that. Make sure to watch that as well. Alright, so stop sharing na natin. Okay, aside from whiteboard, what else can we share? We can share PDF files. For example, we have a desktop file like this one. Again, show not tell. That's a PDF file. I just have to click share. Makikita na niya. Tapos, using annotate tools, just click annotate, you can put markings or ready. So, halimbawa here, mag-answer siya ng option. So, halimbawa, ang sagot niya is letter B. So, just make letter B here. But don't forget to share remote control, okay? So that your student can answer. Otherwise, it's just you that controls the screen. Okay. So, we need to stop share if we want to use a different file or to share a different window. So, stop share. Okay. Share screen ulit. Pwede rin tayong mag-share ng Google Slides. Katulad nito. So, this is a drag and drop activity. So, if I want my student to answer using the annotation tools, just click remote control again. Then, enable your student to control your screen. But, if I want to, do, to make this a drag and drop activity, I have to share it first. So, click share. And then, input the 
name of your student. So usually, what I do is that I share this beforehand na para hindi na during the session ko siya. Uh, sa session ko siya kinagalaw. So, ito. This one is a drag and drop. Oh, oh. That's not a cat. This one. Ka. Ah. Uh, yeah, so, pwede mo rin siyang i-present para mas malaki. Okay, now, ito yung sinasabi ko na sometimes I prefer to use Google Slides because I don't need to stop share. Nakita nyo kanina, di ba? From PDF to Google Slides, nag-stop share muna ako bago nag-share screen. So, medyo meron siyang waiting time or lag time. Unlike sa Google Slides, halimbawa, may isa pa akong Google Slides, I just need to click the, the other tab sa taas, lalabas na siya. So, this one, this is an interactive worksheet. So, pwede siyang pindutin. So, this is from Twinkle. Okay. So, for example, the, the kid will just have to click the correct image. So, alba, a cat. The image is the cat here. Lilabas yung responses. So, ito, it uses hyperlink. And this is what I will teach in the next video. Stop share na natin. So, ano bang pwedeng i-share? Basically, everything you can share. Pwedeng picture, pwedeng uh, whiteboard, pwedeng PDF, pwedeng PowerPoint, pwedeng Google Sites. Anything that you can project in your screen. Lahat yon pwede nyo ring i-annotate. Okay, so when you're done with your class, what the, what's the next thing you need to do is to click end and then end meeting for all. Now, for the basic account of Zoom, dalawa lang kayong pwedeng user na gumagamit nung uh, platform. Unless you upgrade to Pro, it's the only time that you will have more students that can access your class. So, it's up to you if you're going to do a class or one-on-one. -on -one. Pag one-on-one, -on -one, uh, wala na siyang time limit. Unlimited siya. Pero kapag group, pwede rin naman. There's a certain like um, number lang na pwede, but it only lasts to 40 minutes. So, hanggang 40 minutes lang siya. So, if you want it longer, then you have to purchase the pro account. But if it's okay lang din naman na every 40 minutes you restart, that should be then, then go. Then go, ba? Okay, nasa, nasa choice nyo yan at ng setup nyo with your students. I hope you learned a lot today and should you have any questions, feel free to contact me on my page or leave a comment down below. Thank you! Bye!